FIFA 22 is right around the corner. Recently, all the details have been announced, new additions and new gameplay has dropped. However, it seems like every year there are features either removed or not carried over from previous titles and FIFA 22 looks to be a prime example of that. Especially as we're transitioning into next-gen territory, there are some gameplay features and innovations that will be left behind. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news two years running, here are the most egregious removed features from FIFA 22. Sit back, relax, and let's admire EA's incompetence. Let me just preface, I have no joy in making this video. It pains me. I should be excited and ready and roaring to go for a brand new FIFA. But when I see the utter fraudulence of this billion dollar company, I have to call it out and let you guys know what's going on. It's unfair on us and it's time we take a stand. Let me know down in the comments below, what removed feature will you be missing the most? As there is a lot to go through, let's dive in. Now the first issue at hand, in and off the bat, it seems to be getting worse every Every single year and this is the kind of facet of the game that fans probably get outraged the most by it's the removal of teams licenses authentic club badges and just everything that FIFA's gained a reputation for over the years they have lost the licensing again to more Italian clubs and this time Atalanta and Lazio bite the dust EA's tirade of losing Italian licenses and leagues continue they'll both be appearing in game as Bergamo Calcio and Latium respectfully more Italian clubs bite the dust this year and it's just painful with Napoli next to be axed in FIFA 23. They'll be showing up in all their unlicensed glory. It's not even Pez anymore. They've lost the licenses to a free-to-play mobile game, eFootball. I wish EA and Konami can just shake on it and settle this licensing war. Because in the pitch notes, they have a full paragraph on authenticity in the game. And removing clubs, licenses, and logos every single year, I don't think that lives up to the billing. They're self-aware. They know that the fans are passionate about authenticity. And then they let these licenses go every single year like like it's nothing. Unless you're an Italian football fan or have a team supported in SETI B or R, it's a major turnoff for the rest of the career mode population to start an Italian save. We do have more licensing news and drama. We've seen a couple of leaks with the Vatarama Conference League potentially being added and the Indian Super League. I do have an update on the Vatarama Conference, which is the fifth tier of English football. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll be seeing every single team or the whole league, in fact. But what has been confirmed are teams like Wrexham being in the game. They're just going to be in the rest of world category. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll be seeing the entire league edition. Nothing's been confirmed for now, and we're literally weeks away from launch. And not only those teams and leagues, but this also qualifies with Juventus, Roma, both being unlicensed, Serie B not even being in the game, the Brazilian league completely being made up of fake players, the list goes on. The football licensing wars are ruining sports video games. Change my mind. Moving on, as we have three features that were actually removed in a kind of way last year, and it's been confirmed that they are not coming back for FIFA 22. That's right, I'm talking about Scout Future Star, the EA Catalog, and Financial Takeover. Yes, I'm aware that you can still have a financial takeover when you start a brand new save, especially with a new creator club, which we'll touch on later. However, that's only at the start. You can't just randomly be like six years deep into a career mode save and then apply a financial takeover after you've earned it. It's kind of a one and done thing. You don't really get to request funds either, which is another feature that has been removed for years now. The EA Catalog are no longer present. I do believe Volta kind of have their own catalog and store thing, but it's not to do with the whole entire game. It's just specific to that one game mode. And my beloved Scout Future Star, which we've had to pay respects to over the years. It's a major loss to career mode. However, it's been reborn, reincarnated in the homegrown talent again. If you've pre-ordered the game by August 11th, it's kind of locked behind a paywall. I'm not going to lie. Because if you haven't pre-ordered FIFA 22 yet, you're not going to be getting a career mode homegrown talent, which just instantly spawns into every single brand new save. If you've watched the channel over the FIFA 21 game cycle, you see we've done a bunch of content with the homegrown talent. And kind of a similar situation when it comes to the financial takeover. You can only have it once you start a career mode save. You can't just redeem it halfway through or like eight years down the line. You will receive a local youth prospect with world-class potential in your starting youth academies only if you've pre-ordered before August 11th. They've kind of put a deadline on this paywall as well, which is kind of egregious. Now we can officially confirm that Scout Future Star, EA Sports Catalog are never going to be coming back to the game. Now we're starting to move into the territory that really grinds my gears. You know what really grinds? my gears. It's the next-gen aspect of FIFA. We still, of course, have people unable to buy PS5s and Xboxes. They've all been scalped and sold on the black market. It's tough out here. EA has come out and confirmed that next-gen capabilities won't be available on the PC version of FIFA. So, so if you play FIFA on PC, like I do to record my content, you won't be getting any of the next-gen graphics or hyper-motion gameplay. It's going to be an old-gen port from Xbox One and PS4 just on PC, which absolutely makes no sense. My PC probably 
probably has the power of five <laughs> PS5s inside of it and can run next-gen FIFA without a hitch. However, EA have other ideas and said that they wanted to, you know, scale the game down so that more PC players didn't need to have the best setups out there in order to play it. It's a shambles, man. They could have just made an old-gen version and a next-gen version and you decide which one you want to get for PC. But, hey, I'm not here to tell you how to do your job. I'm just a random kid on the internet. However, let's move on to another next-gen feature or something that won't be available on old-gen thanks to a Twitch live stream slash EA podcast. We've had one of the lead developers for career mode announce the kind of differences between career mode on old gen and next gen. Here what he has to say. Every feature that you saw in the pitch notes is across both gens. So the, the locker room is there, creator club is there, everything that's happening in player career is there. The only thing that's different, like we called out, we called them out specifically in the pitch notes, are the, the pre-match atmosphere cinematic sequences where we have like groundskeepers making last minute changes to the pitch, light shows, uh, like some, some locker room warm-ups before the match starts. Uh, those type of cinematics are uh, are uh, unfortunately unavailable on, on the, the last gen, but on new gen, they're, they're all there and they're very, very nice and shiny. Now up next is a bit of a picky one. These are my player exclusives. So if you're a manager only kind of career mode guy or don't really dapple over into the my player career section, here are some features that won't be allocated or appear in manager career. Obviously, number one, we won't have the new player training and development kind of skill trees or perks that we could apply to our team. That is my player exclusive. The new leveling up and earning XP for your pro, that won't be individually applied to every single one of your players. We're still going to be rocking out with the development plan system that EA added in FIFA 21. The new skill tree perks and player growth are literally exclusive to my player and something else that we won't be getting a taste of in manager career mode is dressing room atmosphere. In my player there's going to be brand new dressing room cinematic sequences at the end of every match. There's going to be different scenarios after a win, after you've won the league title, after you've just lost a big rivalry match. It reminds me back in the days of the journey when they had those uh, locker room cutscenes. Nonetheless, they won't be present in manager career mode. Unfortunately, I don't know why we don't get that. I'd love to see Sir BCHD going crazy with the team after they've just won a Champions League final. Or imagine your manager doing his best Neil Warnock impression after you've just lost the game 5-0. You've got to fucking die to get three points! Nonetheless, it's a feature that the manager side of career mode will be missing out on. I feel like we need that same level of detail and attention to our manager's side of the game. Just how my player is getting the attention it well and truly deserves. Hopefully it gets added in a patch or in the next FIFA, but yeah, that's a major letdown for me. Now, this is a pretty minor feature when it comes to the grand scheme of things. It's the commentary. Lee Dixon, who's been on call for about two years now, he's departed as Stuart Robson will take his place. He's been commentating a lot of Serie A football, so I'm familiar with him. His voice and Alex Scott, the first female commentator in FIFA history, will be replacing Alan McAnally, the GOAT sideline commentator. That'll be more noticeable in career mode because it's kind of like updating from around the grounds, the score lines, the injuries. Personally, for me, I think the last five years of FIFA, I've played it on mute. Like, I haven't heard any of the commentary. I'm either listening to the soundtrack or my own music in the background, so it doesn't really affect me. But for the people that like the immersion and the commentary team, those are some changes that you need to know. Another cutscene related feature that has been removed for the game or just tweaked a little bit are the transfer negotiation cutscenes. Right now we've got brand new angles and looks. I mean, it's nothing flashy. We're probably going to skip it after a week, but yeah, it's been removed and in place are some brand new negotiation sequences. It'll probably be nice on the eye, but get old pretty quickly. I mean, we've had the same negotiation cutscenes since FIFA 18. I touched on the journey earlier and another feature that they kind of bring in a couple of features back in from that mode, but a feature that doesn't return from the journey is social media in career mode, whether you're in a my player game or as a manager, there'll be no social media tab. Like they should have just implemented that from the journey as soon as they got it in FIFA 17, but they haven't done it. If you don't remember, it was kind of like a Twitter app. You'd see tweets from random people, pundits, players of the game, ex-players. It was actually pretty neat seeing your follower count increase and just having a side aspect. Like, cause the game is so much focused on social media nowadays. Why isn't that represented in FIFA? It's another feature that hasn't been carried over from the journey. They've left that one in the dust and it's like, you know, just the attention to detail, the lack of depth in the game. I feel like the social media element will really elevate your experience. Now let's talk about create a club, the feature that everyone is hyped for, the main selling point of manager career. Because let me tell you, in beta, I've seen a couple of FIFA 22 beta leaks from career mode and it's not looking good for the manager side of the game anyway. Besides create a club, which has literally been a feature copy and pasted from both pro clubs and ultimate team in terms of the stadium building aspect, they've re-added this feature after years of removal. They did better back in FIFA 07. It's known for being one of the best 
best FIFA installments in the franchise. Not only could you create your club, but you get the choice of sponsors every single year. It was a mixture of made up fake sponsors and real ones. You had a club staff, fitness coaches, stadium upgrades, ticket prices. It just showcases that EA have gone all out for this creator club, which was an old feature. They've brought it back in a brand new way, but they haven't really transitioned over that depth from the old games into this new one. Don't get me wrong, I think this is a good base to build off, but have they spent all this time and not even gone and invested in the smaller details of things? Sponsors and staff we've been crying out for for years, and it's yet another feature not going to be available in FIFA 22. We're in 2021, next-gen consoles are here, and it's still not capable of doing things that the PS2 could. Another old feature, which was probably the coolest addition to FIFA ever. I've ranted about it on the channel in the past. It's the FIFA Creation Center. It's where you can create a team, create a player, create a tournament, import faces online, either of yourself, a real life player, or just any random photo. Apply that to your player, create your own team from the grounds up. Game face scan was also included in this where you could like scan your own face into the game. It's an old school feature. The OGs will know. Now, thanks to the Creator Club announcement, I don't think this is ever gonna get added back in. We've got to appreciate it for what it was because the servers are shut down. You can no longer use it on the old FIFAs. It's really a kick in the guts for the career mode heartthrobs. I have one more feature that won't be present in FIFA 22 career mode. Before we get into some brighter news, I want to leave you guys with something special. However, we have to cover the World Cup situation. We all know the international management side of career mode who will not be having the Qatar 2022 World Cup licenses considering it's happening in December 2022 and not at the end of the current season. That means we'll have to wait until FIFA 23 until we see any like a mini game add-on or just a game in general about the World Cup from EA. The whole World Cup situation next year is an absolute shambles and either unfortunately or fortunately we won't be seeing it unfold in FIFA 22. Now as much as I could rant on about no new features added and some random aspects of the game like the 15 season minimum cap that you can go up to in career mode, I have a long list ready to unload it but here is again the career mode game developer Alex Constantinescu or whatever his last name is. He's a Romanian god. Again, in that QA slash live stream podcast, he has announced that there might be some new other downloadable content, a new feature arriving in FIFA 22 somewhere in the life cycle of the game. So I'm gonna let him do the talking. Are there any plans over the course of the 20, uh, FIFA 22 cycle to basically continue bringing any new content and all features into career mode? <laughs> this is probably the, the saddest part of game development is that I'm unable to speak about what I'm currently working on uh, at, at all times. So if you guys can rest assured that we are working on something, it's just that I, I currently cannot say on what and when will it come, you know but what? there is something. You know yeah, not too many rumors or hints, but something is on the way, whether it's a creator club or update, making that side of career mode more in depth, because basically there are no other changes to career mode besides creator club. Or could it be a highly anticipated online career mode, something we've been waiting for for years, begging for, we're on our knees. Ah, forget about it. They probably won't add that till FIFA 23. I won't get my hopes up. I'm excited and nonetheless, let me know down in the comments, what do you think this brand new feature or DLC will be later? in the year or maybe he's just teasing us and it's actually for FIFA 23 I don't know I hate seeing features come and go every year it pains me to my core knowing how good older FIFA career modes were but it's just what we have to deal with nowadays with EA I think I'm used to it at this point but the career mode community is still outraged and I'm gonna be here fighting letting you guys know that as much as the new additions are bright and shiny and sparkly there are some features that have been swept under the rug and won't be in the brand new games nonetheless hopefully you guys did enjoy if you did learn something in this video make sure to drop it a like down below if you're keen to see more fifa 22 career mode content coming out over the next few weeks and months make sure to hit subscribe if you're new around here on the road to 200k subscribers follow me on twitter all my socials are linked down in the description as always i've been sir bchd a little bit pissed off today but i'll catch you guys in the very next video